Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab and another video. Today we're looking at ATI's very first Radeon graphics card. This is also the first time uh, using my new AGP benchmark system with an Athlon 64 4000 Plus. I've done a video recently, uh, me putting it together, so check it out. I'll put a link down below in the description and also at the end of the video. The benchmark graphs in this video, they will be a little bit empty because this is the first result, but hang in there, they w there will be a lot more results going forward. I might also re-benchmark some of the cards I reviewed earlier just to have those results also show up in the graphs. So in this video, this video is feature packed, we will go over the specs of the card, check out some benchmarks, there's some gameplay with older games, but also newer games that are a little bit of a struggle for this game, but I was surprised to see them actually uh, start up on the Radeon. Also part of every graphics card review from now on is the mandatory and compulsory does it run crisis test. I will spend some time looking at the driver options, how much performance are we losing with AA and AF enabled and what is VPU recovery. There are some nifty tools I recommend like ATI tools and ATI tray tools, so we will have a quick look at those. Also we're going to check out power draw, availability and in the end my recommendation should you get this card for your retro gaming PC. Okay guys, so here we are on the machine, let's run GPU set and see what is under the hood. So we've got the Radeon 7200, 30 million transistors, so that's quite significant, runs at AGP 4X, compatible with DirectX 7, although this card has a, quite a few features supported from DirectX 8. We're using DDR memory, 64 megabytes of it, 128 bits memory uh, width, so that's very good. We're using the latest uh, ATI Catalyst 6, 11 driver and we will have a look at that later and here we can see the clock speeds basically the uh, default clock for the RAM and the GPU 166 megahertz. Now let's go over the specifications of this card. Now ATI once again did a really silly marketing stunt. They launched two versions of the card, one for retail and one for bulk or OEM, usually the retail box uh, you had a shiny box and you got maybe a game with it and a disc and maybe the, one of those video uh, in and out leads. But you also got the option to get a bulk card which was basically just the card without any extra retail accessories. And usually uh, that's what you did, you bought the cheaper card and you expected the same performance. However, what ATI did was the 64 meg version of the retail Radeon was actually clocked higher. It ran at 183 megahertz, whereas all the other cards ran at only 166. So once again, that did not help to uh, get gamers to support ATI. So that's something you have to watch out for if you're shopping around. Pretty much unless you're getting the um, 64 meg version of the, of the retail release, you're, gonna, you're not going to get the 183 megahertz, you're going to get the slower 166. Also, the first Radeon goes under various names. Um, some people just label it as ATI Radeon, so others call it ATI Radeon DDR or SDR if you've got the SDR version. And later was renamed to Radeon 7200, but you can also find it listed under the title Rage 6, which I think was the initial name for it before they changed it. There's also a slightly cheaper and slower version with SDR memory, the Radeon SDR, which I will be looking at in a future video. The Radeon supports hardware transform and lighting and one of the highlights is the Hyperset technology. This is basically memory compression and optimization to get the most out of the available memory bandwidth. Okay guys, let's try out a few newer games. We've got GTA 3. Let's see if the Radeon 7200 can run this game. So here we are in the game. I'm just going to restore the defaults. The only thing I'm changing is the frame limiter so we're not locked to 30 FPS and we're playing a 10 1024 by 768 and 32 bit colors. No group has claimed responsibility. The convoy left police had So here we are in the intro sequence and yes, the game runs. I was actually quite surprised. However, the FPS is uh, definitely not that great. Uh, we are getting 20 something at some times, but when the action gets a little bit intense, it drops down to just over 10 FPS. So here we are driving around, um, yeah, between 15 and 20 something FPS is basically what we're getting. There are some weird graphics or texture glitches on occasions, it's nothing game breaking, but um, yeah, 
might, this card might not be fully supported, but it, it, it runs the game and that's actually, I was quite surprised that it could do that. Okay, let's have a look at the driver. You just have to right click on the desktop and it loads. Now, when you install this driver, you need the .NET Framework version 2.0. Okay, so some options under 3D. We've got uh, anti-aliasing. We can toggle between 2X and 4X and also between performance and quality. We can uh, enable anisotropic filtering. This is texture filtering. Makes the textures on the ground look a lot nicer as they go into the distance, we can uh, change the texture preference between performance and quality, the MIP map detail level between performance and quality. So MIP maps, basically when you have a texture in a game, several smaller versions of, of that texture will be generated and as you go further away, those smaller versions will be used. So this has to do with that. Of course, a vertical refresh for benchmarking, you want to leave that off. For gaming, you might want to check it out, leave it on, and then you don't get any tearing, but it might affect your input lag a little bit. And we've got uh, alpha dithering. Uh, this has to do with playing games and in 16-bit colors, and you've got two, two options, error diffusion and ordered, and usually this is the recommended option. And if you mucked around too much and you're not quite sure how to get back, just click on defaults, and I'm gonna just switch that one back. But there's more under API specific. We have options that are only uh, to do with Direct3D and only to do with OpenGL. For example, 32-bit uh, set buffer. We can, uh, this has to do with texture compression. Alternate pixel center in some games when the text looks weird, you might wanna check out this compatibility option and triple buffering, which can help when you've got VSync uh, enabled, but you need more memory and force 24-bit set buffer depth. So quite a few options here in the driver. All the other stuff is fairly standard. I do want to talk about the smart uh, guard and the VPU recover. These are quite interesting technologies. Uh, VPU recover works by monitoring the communication between the driver and the GPU and if the communication breaks down it tries to reset the graphics driver rather than your machine crashing. And under SmartGuard, um, you can actually run tests and it dials in the AGP speed and some other options. However, you can manually um, turn them off or maybe lower the AGP speed if you're having issues with your chipset. So this is actually quite useful. And yes, you can play Doom 3. However, performance is really, really bad. Uh, we're getting, what are we getting? One, two FPS. And this is at low details. It does run at 1024 and by 768. Uh, because I found resolution doesn't really uh, matter that much. And some of the shadows, they seem to be a bit glitchy. So uh, this, looks <laughs> this looks quite bad here, those shadows. Um, but it runs. And I was actually quite surprised that a lot of the games actually run um, on, this, on this GPU. So yeah. Not doesn't run well, but at least you can run it if you want to try it out. Welcome to Mars, Marine. Now there are a lot of little tools and tweaks that you can use with uh, Radeon video cards. One famous one is the Radeon Tweaker. Um, those of you who had a Radeon in the past, you might be very familiar with this program. Uh, a lot of options here for DirectX. You can, for example, set anti-aliasing here, more DirectX option, OpenGL, and of course, overclocking if you want to muck around and overclock your graphics card. Um, this is one tool definitely worth checking out. I might actually um, put a website together on my, put a, put a page together on my website and I just upload these tools just in case you want to check them out. There's another one, the ATI tool. This one has the artifact scanner, so if you, having issues with your video card or you want to test for stability. Um, it runs this uh, furry cube and detects errors and will tell you if you've got an error. Um, if you overclock in the RAM, this is a very useful tool. You can also overclock your card if you want. And there's one more tool I want to show you. This is the ATI tray tool. It's over here. There you go. You just right click on it and 
This gives you access to a few more driver options that are not in the Catalyst driver. Um, in anti-aliasing, we're getting 6x. In an isotropic filtering, we're getting other options. In the driver, we only got uh, 16x. Um, that's the same as in the driver. That's the same as in the driver. Same goes for the V-Sync. This is new, the flip Q size. We have, no, that's also in the driver. And we've got some optimizations we can turn on. Usually any optimization uh, gives you, might give you a better performance, but also might uh, worsen the quality. And we've got Catalyst AI. This, these are also optimizations. So if you want to uh, be sure you're getting the max quality, you might want to set that to off. And here are a few other tweaks. So these are very popular tool, uh, tools with Radeon cards. And um, as I said, I'll try my best and see if I can upload it to my website at some point. So let's have a look at some benchmark results. The graphs look a little bit empty, but that will quickly change as I review more cards with my new benchmark setup. In 3D Mark 2000, we're getting around 5,450, and in 3D Mark 2001, around uh, 3,690, basically. Let's have a look at some direct 3D benchmarks. We've got expandable, 103 and 67 FPS. In Draken, we're getting 65 and 43 FPS. And we've got a little bit more demanding game, Evolver. That's a new entry to my benchmark uh, portfolio. 45 FPS and 29. And in Unreal 2, this is my most demanding Dark 3D benchmark at the moment. We're getting around 22 FPS. And let's have a look at some OpenGL results in Quake 2, 138 and 96. In Quake 3, we're getting 86 and 53. In Serious Sam, 51 and 34. And my most demanding OpenGL benchmark is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. We're getting 35 FPS at 1024 by 768 and 23 FPS at 1280 by 1024. Let's have a look at power draw. This is measured directly at the power supply. Note that I did not activate cool and quiet, so the processor is running at full speed. So at idle on the desktop, we're getting 61 watts. And Unreal 2, 1600 by 1200, we're getting 96 watts under load. I also wanted to check out performance impact of turning on AA and AS, and I basically maxed out all the eye candy options, and we got the preps counter running at the top and I'm just flicking back and forth between the two modes. So you can definitely see the anti-aliasing in action. All the jaggies are nicely uh, ironed out and uh, you can see that wire a lot clearer. And on the ground, if you look at the floor, you can see the texture filtering really uh, making the textures go into the distance look a lot nicer. Performance impact is massive, however. Um, most modern games, uh, or most games that run okay on this card will become unplayable. However, if you're running older games, definitely check, check this out. It can also come in handy when you're trying to run speed sensitive games. For example, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire is one candidate. If you max out all these eye candy options, it actually becomes quite playable. A quick word on availability on eBay. This card is certainly not that easy to find. You will find listings. Um, some uh, are fair, fair value, so to speak, but some are just outrageously overpriced. Uh, personally, I think this card should sell for around 30, 40 bucks, but I've seen cards listed for 100 and 200, and that is just ridiculous. Now, especially the retail version with 64 meg and 183 megahertz might be very hard to find. My recommendation is don't rush out buying one just yet. I will be looking at some cheaper Radeon options soon that might be very good alternatives uh, to this card. But of course, if you are a collector and you gotta have every card out there, then you might have to open your wallet a little bit and pay a premium. Does it run Crisis? Well, let's have a look. Double click on the icon. Unsupported video card, Radeon 7200. Well, let's just continue and see what happens crash to desktop. Sorry guys, it does not run Crisis. Okay guys, let's wrap it all up. So my new benchmark system works pretty well. I have installed that uh, uh, service pack from Microsoft that deals with this uh, WannaCry ransom virus. Um, I've also installed an unofficial service pack 4. It's one of those uh, unofficial service packs you can get and it patches everything. And I really only had to go online to uh, 
install Steam initially and to activate my games, but you just unplug the Ethernet cord and then you can play in offline mode. So very interesting card. Uh, can I recommend it? Uh, should you rush out and get one? Depends really on the price. Uh, it seems to be a little bit more expensive, so I'm a bit hesitant to recommend it straight away. If you get a good price, then absolutely. But hang in there. I'm going to review a ton of videos, video cards going forward and a lot of budget and value uh, alternatives that are really cheap and easy to pick up. But yeah, um, looking back, this is definitely a decent graphics card. It, 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 like you've seen, it supports older and newer games really well. Decent driver options, lots of driver tools are available. And it definitely, I think, um, made this card appealing to gamers again. So um, the name change Radeon was definitely part of that whole thing, getting rid of the Rage and the Rage 3D. And going forward, it will be interesting seeing the Radeon 7500, 8500 and so on, and how that compares. But we also got to review uh, some more cards from NVIDIA. So thanks guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, if you haven't subbed, please do so. Like or dislike the video and leave me some comments down below. What is your take on the ATI situation back in the day, going from the old Rage cards to the first Radeon. Did you have Nvidia? Did you have a 3DFX? Did you have a Radeon? And what would you choose? That's it guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with another video.